to the consular session at the Embassy of the United States uh, in Bucharest. I, along with my colleagues, uh, would like to take this opportunity to show you what we do and to explain the visa application process. My deputy consul, Tyler Mason, will be your guide and describe what a Romanian applicant experiences while applying for a visa, the scheduling of an appointment, initial reception at the embassy and the consular session, biometrics, the interview, and the procedure for an applicant to receive his or her uh, passport with visa. After that, we look forward to providing a short view of our consular section printing station. Finally, we will take questions during a question and answer session. However, at the start, I'd like to give you some information concerning the number of applicants that we process. As this is our busy season, many Romanians are applying for visas for their planned travel for their summer. On a typical day, we'll interview between 200 and 250 applicants. More than 90% of the applicants will receive visas. In fiscal year 2014, the worldwide refusal rate for Romanians under the B visas category was 9.8%. B visas are regular tourist and business visas. And more than 42,000 non-immigrant visa applications were processed. We're also into our summer work and travel season uh, where students in good standing with uh, uh, English language skills can receive visas to go to the United States to work for a period of time in the summer. We expect to process approximately 6,000 uh, uh, visa applicants for summer work and travel this season. And the question and answer session will be available, available to provide more uh, uh, answers uh, and information about summer work and travel, the visa refusal rate, and anything that uh, you wish to ask us. Again, I'd like to ex express my appreciation uh, for allowing us this opportunity to explain this process to you. And now I'd like to turn uh, the tour over to my colleague, Mason. Thank you. Hello, everybody. Uh, before we demonstrate the visa interview process, I'd like to take just a moment to echo the Consul General's sentiments. Uh, we're very happy to have you here today. Thank you for coming. And before we get to the demonstration phase, uh, I'd just like to briefly also discuss for several minutes how a visa applicant makes an interview appointment. Okay, generally the first step is to pay the application fee. Most often this is done by visiting the website ustraveldocs.com forward slash RO where you'd print a deposit slip and go to the nearest convenient BRD bank location. The application fee for most types of non-immigrant visa is $160 payable in RON or US dollars. And there is an online method for payment called TrustPay. That's also explained on the website. Uh, but most applicants find it more convenient to go to BRD and pay in person. Once you've paid the application fee, you'll get a receipt. The receipt looks a lot like this. And each of you should have already, uh, I believe in your packets, gotten an example. Okay, the receipt's important because it contains a reference number. You're going to need the reference number in order to schedule your appointment. The second number you need comes from the online application form. The online application form is called a GS-160. Once you've completed this, and instructions are also on the website, ustraveldocs.com forward slash RO. Once you've completed the online application, you will print a confirmation page. The confirmation page looks like this. The second number you're going to need is the barcode number from the confirmation page. And the last number you're going to need is your own passport number. So once you have the three numbers handy, the reference number from your receipt, the barcode number from the online application confirmation page that you've printed, and your passport number, you're ready to schedule your interview appointment. Uh, the wait time for a visa interview generally runs uh, between one and three days. That's the typical wait. Um, it can vary, I believe the next block of available appointments for us at this point in time is April 23rd. Uh, so once you've decided when you want to come in for a visa interview, you will, tr you will also schedule the appointment via ustraveldocs.com forward slash RO. 
If by any chance you have any difficulty um, scheduling online or you prefer to talk to someone, you can also contact our call center. And the information sheet you received has the call center's telephone number. Um, the call center is also available to Skype with prospective applicants. And the call center um, can do online chatting as well. And to contact the call center is free at any time. Uh, you can be at any stage of the appointment process and you can get in touch with them if you have questions. Okay, so once you've scheduled either via the online process on the website or via the call center, what you need to bring to the embassy on the date of your appointment are most of the things we just discussed. You're going to need your receipt, the confirmation page from your online application, the appointment letter that's generated once you schedule the appointment and your passport. So those are the four essential pieces <coughs> of uh, information that you're going to need to bring with you. Uh, when you arrive at the consular section on the morning of your interview, uh, please note that uh, we recommend that you leave your electronic devices with a friend or at home because we don't have the storage space once you pass into the consular section uh, to hold on to those for you. Now you've seen the very first step out here this morning, which is that one of our greeters will look at your appointment letter, scan it, and then barcode your passport. The passport will be barcoded so that we can now track it through the rest of the process after the visa is issued all the way through delivery. So once your passport is barcoded, you're going to pass through security and then through the uh, walkway and into the consular lobby where, where you're going to be greeted. Uh, another member of our staff, another greeter, will welcome you, give you over here a Cumatic number. Okay, and um, <coughs> Nikki, sorry, um, we're going to have you do that in just a moment here. And the Cumatic ticket that you receive, you'll keep with you through the remaining three steps. And those three steps are document intake, which we're going to demonstrate for you at window three today, biometric collection, which will be window five, and then the visa interview itself, which will be at window seven. Now, if the visa is issued, and most of them are, then the next day, the visa will be printed and, and pasted into your passport. And then, that afternoon, the courier will come and pick up the passport. And that happens, as I said, in the afternoon. And from that point, it takes typically two business days for your passport to be returned to you. There are two options. Uh, the courier, in all instances, is TNT. Uh, there, the two options are that for free, you can pick up your passport at one of 24 locations throughout Romania. Or if you choose, and it's more convenient for the fee of 24 RON, you can have the passport delivered to your home or office. And that, in a nutshell, concludes the step-by-step -step process. Bună ziua! Bună ziua! Dați-mi, vă rog, documentele. Urmează domnul 70 la ghișeul 3. Aveți aici bonul de ordine, pe baza care aveți fi chemată la ghișeu, instrucțiunile. Hai sunt sătul de aici este sătul de documente pentru care avem, pe care aveți nevoie. Am luat mintea, cât așteptat, să luați în loc în sală. Mulțumesc frumos! Mulțumesc! Urmează bonul 70 la ghișeul 3. Bună ziua! Bine ați venit! Documentele, vă rog, pașaportul, pagina de confirmare a documentului de 160 și dovada plății. Pe baza acelui ași bon de ordine veți fi chemată să vi se ia împrentele și apoi interviul. Luați loc, vă rog! Mulțumesc! Mulțumesc! Bună dimineața! Dați-mi pașaportul și pagina de Puneți patru degetele de rumană stângă, plus stângă, și dreapta, la fel, un pic mai tare, da, 
și degetele mari. Amândouă. Mulțumesc. Mulțumesc. Așteptați în sală, vă rog, pentru ea. Bună dimineața. Bună ziua. Tașu, poți să vă rog și pe genul ca vreau. Mulțumesc. Și unde mergeți în SUA? La New York. Pentru o vizită, o vacanță? Da, o vacanță scurtă. Ok. Aveți rude sau prieteni în New York? Fratele meu a câștigat loteria vizelor. Ok. Cu ce o să ocupa fratele meu? Este inginer. Inginer, ok. În cine plătește pentru bilete avea? Eu o să plătesc. Ok. Cu ce vă ocupați de aici, în România? Sunt profesoară. Profesoară, ok. Sunteți casătorită? Da. Da? Aveți copii? Unul. Ok. La universitate, școala? Este în clasa șasea. Ok, bine, bine. Aveți o casă sau apartament? Avem o casă. Ok, bine. O clipă, vă rog. Perfect, mulțumim. Viza este aprobată. Vă mulțumesc. Cu picioare. Este valabilă pentru 10 ani și va fi dată 2-3 zile prin coriul țintic. Mulțumesc frumos. Cu picioare. Bun, bun. La revedere. Vizas are typically printed and sheets of three. This is what they look like before they're issued, before they come out of the printer. Once they come out of the printer, okay, and it's uh, got all the terms and conditions on the visa, such as the visa category, the validity dates, if it's multiple entry. Um, we paste it into the passport, and then it's run through a barcode reader to make sure everything is correct. So if the visa passes quality assurance checks, then um, we do a count, we prepare everything for the courier who will be here in the afternoon. And this is what it looks like. All these passports that you see here, they all have visas in them. And they're all going out to the courier this afternoon. Um, well, the number one thing we do besides taking care of our American citizens overseas is to seek to facilitate uh, travel to the US through issuing visas. And for each and every person who comes uh, to the consular section, we try to make the process as short, comfortable, and positive as is possible, and to treat all visa applicants with courtesy and dignity. The embassy moved here from its downtown location in September 2011. Since opening to the public here at our uh, present location on September 14th, 2011, Approximately 135,000 visa applications have been processed, and the ba vast majority of those applications were for people who came to the consular section to apply for their visas. Out of all those applications, more than 118,000 persons have been issued visas. I'd like to break down the numbers uh, to an annual level. So if you wish to know how many uh, visa applicants we had last year, I can tell you that in uh, Fiscal year, we use the term fiscal year, and our fiscal year runs from October 1st to September 30th. But in fiscal year 2014, we had more than 42,000 applications uh, processed, and more than 37,000 visas were issued. And in 2013, it was uh, 35,000 processed, more than 31,000 issued. But if we go back in time to uh, fiscal years 2006 and 2007, we had more than 58,000 uh, visa applications. So as you can see, the number of visa applications we received, it, it fell year after year, actually, until, until uh, after uh, Romania entered the European Union. Uh, and uh, it is only the last two years, uh, fiscal years 2013 and 2014, where the number of visa applicants has begun to increase again. And this year, we've received 10% 10, 10 more applications at the same time of the fiscal year as we had last year. So, so if that trend uh, continues, then we'd expect to uh, process about 45,000 uh, of these applications uh, this year. Um, in fiscal year 2014, we processed more than 400 student visas and more than 5,500 uh, visas for seafarers and merchant mariners and people who would work on cruise ships and airline crews. So that's pretty significant. And uh, I believe that's the 11th uh, highest uh, uh, seafarer type of visa issuance in the world for us, for the Americans. And, uh, and we also uh, issued uh, more than 1,000 work-based non-immigrant visas. 
At the same time, as the number of our visa appli applicants has begun to grow, our visa refusal rate has been declining. Uh, to put this in a historical perspective, in fiscal year 2006, the worldwide refusal rate for Romanians was 34.1%. Uh, in fiscal year uh, 2007, it was 37.3%. In fiscal year 2008, 25%. 2009, 26.3%, 2010, 24.8%, 2011, 22.4%, .4, then 2012, 17%, and 2013, 11.5%, and this last fiscal year, it was 9.8%. So it was very high in 2007, 2008, before Romania went into the European Union. It's been declining ever since, so uh, that should be good news. Um, but in general, the more stable and prosper, prosperous the country is, the more likely the refusal rate is to go down or to be low. On an individual level, having strong ties to uh, one's country uh, is useful when one applies for a, a visa. Um, some people will ask, well, the refusal rate is, is uh, relatively high. What is the sort of thing that brings the refusal rate down? Part of it is the stability of the country, a prosperous economy. But uh, we also do our own uh, statistical analysis of, of uh, how the people who've been issued visas are, are returning to Romania or not. And it's an internal sort of thing, um, but it gives us a kind of a benchmark to see how things are going. So you would expect as the visa refusal rate declines, it's possible the number of persons who overstay in the United States goes up. Um, for the most part, um, if I were to give advice to people uh, um, traveling to the United States, I would ask them to comply with the conditions of the class of the visa they're using. If the visa does not allow you to work um, in the U.S., do not work without lawful authorization. And do not overstay the period uh, you've been granted to stay in the U.S. So. Um, the studies that we do uh, are what we call validation studies. We get an idea of how many people may be overstaying. If that rate is very low, it makes for a logical case to uh, perhaps issue more visas. If that were very high, then we would have an idea that uh, something could be wrong. But the good news is we've been uh, declining on the refusal rate over the years. And uh, although... Uh, I can't give you the exact uh, rate that we found for overstays, and it, it, we can't be exactly 100% uh, uh, accurate on that, but, but we can do a trend from year to year. But uh, um, the refusal or the overstay rate is relatively lo uh, low. Um, this becomes important uh, um, if legislation passes, which allows for a change in the, uh, in the refusal rate uh, for a visa waiver program, for instance. But uh, we may get into that uh, with questions. Uh, I'm sure somebody might want to talk about the visa waiver program. But, but for now, I'd like to open it up uh, to questions uh, for myself or for any of my uh, subject matter uh, uh, colleagues. So, so maybe, uh, you have an advice uh, for those who didn't get a visa, but they are clean, so they don't have problems, and they want to travel to the U.S., but somehow they, they get rejected? I would say that for a person who doesn't uh, receive a visa right, it depends when, when were they denied a visa. If they were denied a visa 10 years ago and their circumstances in their life have changed, perhaps 10 years ago they, they didn't have a job or they were just finished school, they weren't established in a career, they didn't have an apartment, uh, um, and things change over time. If those persons were denied before, we look at them every single time they come in. Uh, uh, and make an individual decision. We don't have a quota for the number of people we should refuse in a day or issue in a day. We will look at the person every time. And of course, if a person was just refused a week ago and then they come back, then you know, we want to know what has changed in your circumstances uh, within one week. Why would we think that you, we could issue a visa now? But uh, um, certainly people, uh, you know, when they have established strong ties, then they can apply. Ties are not always just economic ties. A priest might not have a, a, a high income, but a priest has ties to their church or to their community. So we look at 
all kinds of factors when we're looking at an individual and deciding whether or not to uh, give that person a visa. Mm. When can I hope we will no longer need visa to travel to United States? The, um, so you're asking about the visa waiver program. So, um, well, uh, let me just say that uh, um, in order to enter the visa waiver program, the Secretary of Homeland Security in consultation with the Secretary of State uh, there is authorized to designate a country to participate in the visa waiver program, provided the country meets um, uh, applicable requirements. Uh, a number of those requirements, even though it, the Secretary of Homeland Security with the Secretary of State can request that a country enter, the, the requirements, though, are legislative. Um, and that, those are, uh, we have, there are several requirements. Uh, one is enhanced law enforcement security related data sharing with the United States, the issuance of e-passports, uh, having a visitor, the B refusal rate of less than 3%. And, and as I mentioned for last year, it was 9.8, first time under 10% though. Um, in, a, in a prior fiscal year, um, timely reporting of both blank and uh, um, issued lost and stolen passports, maintenance of high counterterrorism, law enforcement, border control, and document security standards. Now, so um, if Romania was to go into the visa waiver program, all these, and I believe there are a few more, but these are the main, main uh, requirements. Um, the good news is that a number of those uh, Romania already meets. The Romania issues uh, an e-passport. Um, we are working with uh, the Romanian authorities through uh, a consular uh, working group. Um, the consular working group uh, meets uh, quarterly or periodically uh, where we discuss consular issues, but not only uh, uh, um, consular issues, but uh, law enforcement, border security, immigration, international adoption, and, and of course, visa waiver program itself. A lot of the law enforcement issues we're interested in um, are also requirements uh, for the visa waiver program. So from our perspective, what we're trying to do is satisfy all the requirements that we can. And we've got a problem with the 3% refusal rate, yes? But everything else, we're trying to work with the Romanian uh, authorities through this consular working group. By the way, I co-chair that along with uh, a counterpart from the Ministry of External Affairs. And uh, we're trying to satisfy these requirements. Um, we, have, uh, um, we have satisfied the requirement for lost and uh, stolen passports. Uh, we've done that recently. We also have uh, satisfied some uh, requirements having to do with uh, counterterrorism. And, but we do have one information sharing agreement that is required for visa waiver program we still need to do, and it's, we call it a preventing and combating serious crime um, agreement. That right now is with the uh, Romanian authorities, and it has to go through a number of uh, Romanian ministries to clear on, on every time we make a, a text change. Um, but we're working on that one. So, um, and so that's all positive. There's also some issues about extraditions and uh, repatriations. Um, the three, so from our perspective, these are good agreements for us, for any country. We want to you know, make these agreements for any country, uh, um, but they, so ha they, they happen to be, you know, also required for a visa waiver program. So from our perspective, we said, Let, let's do these. And that's what we want to do. The refusal rate, um, that, uh, 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 it is going down. I know that uh, we, we understand how important this issue is to the Romanian public. Um, we see, see it when um, Romanian uh, uh, officials and um, politicians mention it to, and hear it, <laughs> when it mention it, this issue to our visitors, official visitors from the embassy. Um, uh, the, there was a time when, uh, uh, around 2008, where a number of uh, countries went into the visa waiver program. And those countries got in when there was a waiver of the 3% refusal rate. The law that allowed those countries to get in, sunset, it, it stopped. Um, if that, uh, 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 there has been legislation before Congress um, to reinstitute that um, along with a, an overstay rate requirement. And uh, it's not uh, my place to tell Congress what to do. They, they decide uh, what laws they're going to pass. 
But if I were on the Romanian side, I would be watching those laws, and I would be looking at the requirements that those, those proposed legislation uh, uh, require, such as these information sharing agreements or uh, an overstay rate and various things. And I would, I would hope that uh, if I were Romanian, I would be working with the American Embassy to satisfy all those requirements. So uh, one of those is preventing and combating serious crimes. So we'd like to do that. Uh, as soon as we can, we're very eager to, to finish that. Um, if uh, the, the legislation were to pass, then, um, then we are actually under the 10% 10, 10 is the refusal rate that has been mentioned before. Uh, so that would be very interesting. So. <laughs> so last year you've released three visas for international adoptions. Can you tell us about them something and what are the conditions on these international adoptions? on releasing the visa? Um, well, um, I'm glad you brought that up. Because <laughs> in general, uh, the, the statistics we gave you for the visas, they're approximations, they're, they're very close, uh, but they're not the exact, exact numbers. But that number is, is exact. And um, international adoption, this principle is very important to us. Um, uh, there had been a moratorium on international adoptions uh, in Romania, uh, approximately 10 years long. Um, but the United States position has always been that uh, we think when it's in the best interests of a child, and if an adoption of a child who doesn't have a family um, can take place, if it doesn't take place in their home country, then why not consider uh, that the child be adopted internationally? Um, the uh, Roma uh, new Romania law uh, allows for inter-country adoption um, by Romanian citizens who live abroad or relatives of uh, a Romanian child. Um, there aren't uh, necessarily, well, it's hard to say how many Romanian Americans were, are out there who could adopt a Romanian child. Anyways, our position is we work with uh, the Romanian authorities um, uh, regarding adoptions, and we're uh, very willing to um, issue immigrant visas for inter international adoption when the case moves through the uh, requirements that the requirements under the Hague Convention for adoptions. We think these the requirements are very strict and very transparent, and we think that uh, um, um, we'd be thrilled to be able to issue more uh, inter-country uh, inter adoption visas uh, to children. Again, as I said, when it's in the best interest of the child, if the child cannot be placed with a, with a family in Romania, um, we believe that uh, uh, children thrive best when they're in a family, uh, in a family unit, that the, the help they receive from the other members of their family is better than any institution will be, and it goes on forever for a lifetime. So um, the, right now, uh, we, and when we're asked uh, about it, uh, and if we're asked, if you were to ask us what, what we would like to see for inter-country inter adoptions, we would very much like to see Romania consider um, allowing a more liberal choices of who those adopting parents could be. Because we have people in, in Montana, in Iowa, in Ohio, they're really good folks, and they would like to adopt a child, and they're, they're not Romanians. So they are unable to, to adopt a child in Romania. So. Hey, um, we had on our Facebook uh, site not yeah. too long ago, in the last few months, some information on the families who recently adopted, and that is, would that still be available to anyone who's interested, or is that no longer? It would still be up on our yeah. page. Yeah. You just have to look yeah. for it. We know it's a, it's a very, very sensitive subject, uh, especially for various things that were happening more than 10 years ago. Um, but we think that uh, with the, under the Hague Convention on Adoptions, there's a, there should be a process that can keep the, uh, that the, that the press can view, that the public can look at and see that bad things are not happening to children. So. <laughs> 